Hey friends, this is the Miss Wolfie from our Half Acre Homestead. Yeah, don't look at my hair. This is Frankie and Johnny's budget. Now remember folks, these people are sharing with us so that we can learn. All right, so there's no judgment here. All right, Frankie and Johnny, she has given me her expenses, her cars, everything. There is, uh, let's just go over the list so that, you know, we all know. There is a mortgage, there's a grandchild savings account, car payment, travel trailer payment, car insurance. There is phone and the internet, cell phones, direct TV, Netflix, electric, alarm for house. Her husband smokes $87 weekly in cigarettes. I'm an ex-smoker, no judgment. As I went over these expenses and I, and I did the math and then I get, I, came up with a couple of ideas. So the fixed monthly expenses are or $2,346. Credit cards are $650. Utilities, all utilities, are $668. Food is an average of $400 a month. And they have an entertainment budget of $60 a month, which is usually like dinner out. Okay, so when you add this all up, the fixed monthly, the credit cards, the average utilities, the food, and the entertainment budget, it comes to $4,124. But the cigarettes come to $348. So their total payout for the month is $4,472. Now, this is what I've done. This is their monthly income. This is all of their listed debts and debits. And this is what says they have left over in surplus. Now that's actually quite a bit to work with, but we can make it more. If we I've got this up here, let's see. Okay, cigarettes. We're gonna attack them first because they're the most obvious choice to attack first. That's all, no judgment. You can, uh, your husband can quit. Now, I smoked for 26 years, two and a half packs a day. I'm not saying a word. Now, your husband can quit or he can smoke home rollies. For most of the time, now I'm not advocating cigarettes. I'm the last person to advocate cigarettes. But I'm also a person who suffered massively with addiction when it came to cigarettes and alcohol. Okay? So what I am saying is how we managed to save money when we were smoking is that I bought my tobacco at an Indian reservation if I could get it. Or the cheapest tobacco I could find, and I rolled Howie cigarettes before he went to work every day. And I only rolled mine as I needed them so that I wouldn't smoke as much. There, so he can change brands uh, or go to Home Rollies, and that will actually trim probably $150 a month out of that $348. I guarantee it because both Howie and I smoked. So there, we can add that to the surplus, bringing the surplus up to $374 a month. Now your entertainment budget, you say it's like mostly going out to eat. But if you want, I noticed you have Netflix on your list. So why don't you, if you wanna save some extra money, do have a homemade pizza and popcorn and Netflix night. You can make an easy thin crust pizza. Look at my list. Look for thin crust pizza, okay? Because it's really easy. You don't have to deal with yeast or anything. You just make um, a flour tortilla, brown it on one side in a dry grilled frying pan, flip it over, top it, throw it in the oven really cheap 
really help much much healthier than anything you're going to get from a takeout or even the freezer at the grocery store so netflix popcorn and movie night make a big deal out of it plan it put it on the calendar and that way you it's it's your entertainment and you're you're looking forward to it when you put it in that special bracket it becomes your entertainment howie and i rarely go out really okay so what else did i oh your direct tv you pay 179 dollars a month for direct tv trim your program howie and i have shaw tv and we were paying a whole lot of money for tv we rarely watch because we watch mostly netflix so what i did was i we went through the programming and i said to howie what is it that you actually what channels do you want and we added them up and we cut the programming down and we cut our programming almost in half because it's one of those things that you have just in case right tv we don't really especially when you got netflix and youtube we don't do a lot of tv so why pay $179 a month, you know, when you could probably trim the programming? And if you trim the programming um, for your TV, you could probably get that down to $79 a month. And with the, ex with the extra $100, we're going to add that onto your surplus. And now we're up to $504 in surplus. Your gas for your cars, it says you have three cars, two, two used regularly. I'm not going to ask what the third car is. For all I know, it could be a racing car. Um, $320 a month. Now, Howie drives to Ottawa every day, five days a week. Uh, that's 20 days a month. He drives to Ottawa. And he drives a Hyundai Accent. My big old pig, the truck rarely goes out of the driveway unless I'm going shopping. I make those things a planned thing. We pay about $320 a month in gas for ourselves. And that's not running the motor coach or anything like that. But what I do to save on gas is I don't go anywhere unless I absolutely have to. And we plan things. Like if I need Howie to go shopping with me, he doesn't drive all the way home and then get in the truck and go all the way back into Ottawa to shop with me. I meet him in Ottawa at a, at a store and we shop and then we go. And when we shop, we do what we call the loop. We plan everywhere we have to go and we do it in one shot. That saves, you'd be amazed how much that saves in gas. Um, you could probably trim $50 off your gas a month just with some careful planning. And that would give you $554 surplus every month. What can we do with that $554? Now that's not counting any overtime. So Howie doesn't get overtime, but any money he earns outside of work, uh, repairing a ding in someone's fender, or painting someone's motorcycle gas tank, or the shroud for their snowmobile, or fixing a crack in a snowmobile shroud, anything like that that he does from home outside of work hours, he keeps that money himself. That's his, that's his overtime money. Okay, so we have $554 plus any overtime coming in. Now we're just gonna talk about the $554. That overtime, anything that comes in, you do with what you want. Now you can put 250 of that into emergency savings. Emergency savings are that cushion that you need if somebody breaks a leg and can't work. Or if a car breaks down, or if a relative, you know, there's a, the family emergency on the other side of the country or two or three states or provinces away and you have to get there. So having an emergency savings cushion is there, not for when you just want to get out of the house, but for when shit hits the fan and the hot water heater breaks down or your transmission falls out of your car, that kind of thing. Now you can take a hundred of that and extra pantry stock up thinking about things that you don't want to buy or you don't want to run out of and then spend money on when you're broke things like 
toilet paper, okay? One thing I hate is, one thing I've always hated is when I'm really skint and I, and I have very little money to work with, that I have to spend some of it on toilet paper. That just drives me nuts. That's why I always stock up on the things that are essential but non-essential to life. You know what I mean? So, I mean, you could take $100 a month over and above your $400 a month you've allotted for groceries and you can stock your pantry with extra items that you don't want to run out of. You can have, you can take another $100 and what we'll call this recreational savings. What this is for is for gifts, uh, like day trips if you want to go see the parliament buildings or something like that, or vacations. But we're talking things like Christmas, Hanukkah, whatever, whatever the case may be, you may want to take the year and tuck that extra hundred bucks into a savings account. And the last hundred and four dollars, divide it between your credit cards to pay over the minimum. Now, you mentioned, Frankie, that you spit, you do try and pay more than the minimum, but if you budget properly, and you even, how many credit cards did you have? One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so that's an average of $15 more per credit card. Now, you have some that are $50 and some that are $250. Obviously, you don't have to go equally across the board. You can put $20 on one, $15 on another. Now, this is not your minimum payment. This is your minimum payment Plus, you would be amazed how much and how fast your mortgage or your credit cards or your debts will go down if you pay even 1% of the balance back over and above the minimum. In other words, if you have a $1,000 credit card and you pay an extra $10 over and above the minimum payment, that comes directly off the principal and doesn't get eaten up in interest. 90% of your minimum payment is made in interest. This is the Mrs. Wolfie from our Half Acre Homestead saying, budgeting can be overwhelming, but once it's all down on paper, you actually can physically see your spending habits, your spending patterns, and where all the little extra money goes that you're not even noticing until now. Just makes home economic sense. Take care, God bless.